Pascal's triangle. All right, so we all remember the pattern from yesterday. You start with your first term. Now notice the difference in this first term today. It's not just a single variable or a single number. It is a uh, monomial expression. It's 2y. So we need to put that in parentheses when we raise it to the fifth power because we're going to have to raise the 2 to the fifth power and the y to the fifth power. And do your countdown. Okay, 2y to the fourth. 2y cubed, hopefully I'm not going to run out of room, 2y squared, 2y to the first, and for the sake of room, I'm not going to write the 2y to the zero because we know that that always ends up being 1. Okay, my second term is just 1, but let's put it in here. Okay, we start with 1 to the fifth on the extreme right side, so then we've got 1 to the fourth, 1 cubed, 1 squared, 1 to the first, and then, of course, 1 to the 0. All right, then the third step is we have to go in and put in our coefficients from Pascal's triangle. So we look at the uh, row labeled 5. It's technically the sixth row. Um, notice the number of coefficients is always going to match how many terms you have. So if you start to try and fill this in and you're, you don't have enough numbers or you have too many numbers, then that means that you picked the wrong row to use, okay? Uh, and there was a plus inside of our binomial, so that means all of these signs are positive. All right, now, in the next step here, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to take a little extra step here, okay, uh, just to make sure that you see exactly what's going on. Okay, as I mentioned before, we put that 2y in parentheses because we have to apply that fifth power to the 2 and to the y. Okay, so we've got 2 to the fifth, y to the fifth, plus 5 times 1 is 5, times 2 to the fourth, y to the fourth, plus 10 times 2 cubed, y cubed plus 10 times 2 squared y squared plus 5 times 2. Uh, that one's raised to the first, so it's just 2y. And then our final uh, number is just 1. So 2 to the fifth is 32. So we've got 32y to the fifth plus uh, 2 to the 4th is 16, 5 times 16 is 80, y to the 4th, plus 2 cubed is 8, 10 times 8 is 80, y cubed, uh, plus 2 squared is 4, 10 times 4 is 40, 40 y squared, 5 times 2 is 10, so we've got 10y, and we've got plus 1 down the end. So that is our final answer. All right, let's look at example B. We have 4y cubed, so making it a little bit more complicated again. Not only do we have the coefficients, but we also have an exponent on the variable already, okay? So we're going to have to call upon our knowledge of uh, exponents uh, and what we know about that, okay? So we've got 4y cubed. This one's raised to the fourth, so not quite as long this time. 4y cubed cubed, 4y cubed squared, 4y cubed to the first, and again, I'm going to leave that last one off. So we've got 1 to the fourth on the end, got 1 cubed, 1 squared, 1 to the first. Look at the fifth row of the uh, Pascal's triangle, the one labeled for 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Also notice that the, um, with the exception of the 1, the second number, should match the exponent, okay? We're raising this to the fourth power. Well, we look at the row that has the four. One, four, six, four, one. So we've got one, four, six, four, 
one. This one had a minus in the binomial, so the very, very first term is positive. Then we've got negative, positive, negative. Last term is always positive. Okay, so let's work this out. We have, I don't really need to write that one there. Four to the fourth. Now, does anybody remember when you raise a power to another power, what are we supposed to do with those exponents? What do we do with those numbers? We don't add them. Multiply. When you raise a power to a power, we multiply. When we're multiplying variables, if we were multiplying y cubed times y to the fourth, that's where we add the exponents. But when we raise a power to another power, we multiply those exponents. So that becomes y to the 12th. Minus 4 times 1 times 4 cubed. y to the 3 times 3, so that's 9. Plus 6 times 4 squared. y to the 6th. 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 4 times, uh, this one's raised to the first, and then plus 1 on the end. <coughs> okay, 4 to the 4th is 256. Y to the 12th. Minus, well, guess what? That's going to become 4 to the 4th again. 4 times 4 cubed is like 4 to the 4th. So we've got 256 y to the 9th plus 4 squared is 16. 6 times 16. I'm not going to try and do that one in my head. Not trusting myself this morning. 6 times 16, 96. <coughs> Minus 4 times 4 is 16, y cubed plus 1. Now, if you remember uh, in our previous examples, um, our variables just step down the number. Okay, the highest power matched the power that we were expanding to. So like the example we just did, we were raising that to the fifth power. So in our final answer, the highest exponent was 5, and then we're down 4, 3, 2, 1, nothing, okay? But when other exponents are involved, like with this example, you're not going to have the exact same thing. Okay, now your highest power of exponent is going to be um, the multiplication of that exponent and the exponent you're raising the bottom to, uh, but you can't really count down the way that we have them. All right, one more example here, uh, and then we've got just a few more on the next page. All right, raising n minus 2m to the fourth cubed. Okay, the order really doesn't matter, okay? Just keep it in the order that it's in, because you don't want to start rearranging stuff and, and messing it up. Okay, so take the first term, raise it to the third, squared, I don't know that I like myself. Well, yeah. Uh, into the first. And I've got room here, so I'll go ahead and put into the zero just for effect. Okay. Then take your second term and start on the end. Bless you. Bless you. 2m to the fourth squared. 2m to the fourth to the first. And to the zero. But we know that part's one. I've been leaving that off because of space. But. Okay, look at the third row. It is one, three, three, one. There's a minus in our binomial, so the first term's positive, then it's negative. Yes, Rico? The first term, you start on the left and count down to the right. The second term, you start on the right and count down to the left. What were the last terms always? 
Uh, that was uh, that was not a good decision by me to say that because the last term is not always positive. If the if the power is even, the last term is always positive. If the power is odd, the last term is going to be negative. What was the other question? Oh, okay. 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 Any other questions? All right. So let's simplify. Um, anything to the zero is one. So that first term is just n cubed. We've got minus three n squared times uh, to the first. So two m to the fourth plus. 3n times 2 squared, m to the 8th, minus um, 2 cubed, m to the 12th. Okay, last bit of simplifying, we've got <coughs> n cubed minus 3 times 2 is 6, n squared, m to the 4th. 2 squared is 4, so 3 times 4 is 12. n, m to the 8th, minus 8, m to the 12th. <clears throat> um, now, you can't really check it when you have uh, two variables, but let's see here. If we wanted to check our work on part B, uh, you can check your work in your calculator by typing these into y equals. Okay, we've kind of done stuff similar to this before. If you type the original for, don't put the y, put x, 4x cubed minus 1, raise it to the fourth, put that in y1, and put your answer in y2, And press enter and then go to your table and make sure that all the y values are the same for the same x values. Um, and you can confirm that way that your expression is correct. Okay, again, it's not going to tell you what you did wrong, but it will tell you whether or not you did something wrong. Okay, so like I said, you can't really check it with two variables, but if you've just got one variable, you can, you can do it that way. All right. Um, what if we just want to know one specific term? Okay, what if we want to know just one specific term? We don't want to know the entire expression. If we've got 3 minus y, or excuse me, 3y minus 4x to the fourth to the fourth, and we want to know what's the third term of that polynomial, okay, here's how we can do it. First of all, <clears throat> um, I would start with, since it's to the fourth, Find your third coefficient on Pascal's triangle. Okay, so for the uh, row for fourth power, the third coefficient is 6. Okay, so um, then the third term, take your first one. The first one would be 3y to the fourth. The second one would be 3y cubed. The third one would be 3y squared. <clears throat> And let's see here, 4x to the 4th, it would also be squared. How do I know that? Remember, when we're setting it up, these exponents right here add to be the exponent that we're expanding to. Okay. And then there was a minus here, so we've got to think first term's positive, second term's negative, third term's positive. So we're good there. <clears throat> okay. And then all we have to do is simplify. Okay. So 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16, x to the 4th squared is x to the 8th, and then we just need to multiply 6 times 1, or not 6 times 1, 6 times 9 times 16, 864, 864 y squared x to the 8th. Okay, we're going to do another one, because I know that... <coughs> It's a lot of thinking without expanding this completely. But you don't want to have to expand it completely if you just if they're just asking you about one single term. Okay? 
So let's do another one.